Now, here is maybe a way to look at AI and particle physics. On one side, scientists operating cutting-edge scientific hardware like the LHC increasingly relying on AI. But on the other side, AI also needing cutting-edge hardware specifically developed for it. My next guest is Sofia Vallecorsa. Welcome, uh, Sofia, an AI and quantum researcher here at CERN Open uh, Lab. Welcome. Tell us how you use AI in your daily work. Thank you, Bruno. So um, I use AI to accelerate simulation. Um, normally, uh, simulation is done using Monte Carlo techniques. This is a generic approach that is used by many different field, scientific fields beyond physics. Um, and it, it does a very, very good job at it, in the sense that results, Monte Carlo results are very accurate. The problem is that it's also extremely demanding in terms of computing resources. So part of, the, of, of, of my research is trying to understand how to use AI, and in particular deep generative models, to replace, replace Monte Carlo simulation. So you talk about generative models. Explain, explain maybe that concept to So generative us. models are very interesting uh, models that have been become very popular in the past few years. Um, the idea is that they learn a hidden distribution from the training data, and then they are capable of reproducing synthetic data that looks realistic, that looks just like the data that, that they've been trained on. And those are the models that probably you, you heard of um, when you read those news about uh, producing faces of uh, fake people. Deep fake videos, for example. Or, yes. or that, or even uh, applications in art. People are starting to use generative models to generate art. Yeah. Uh, we use them to uh, try and understand if we can replace, uh, up to what level of accuracy we can replace Monte Carlo simulations for our studies. So let me let me understand, see whether I understand correctly what, what happens. So you take what physics already knows. Uh, out of that, you create a computer simulation of how nature, quote unquote, is based on that knowledge. Then you confront it with real world data. If there is a difference between the two, that means that your simulation, your model is missing something. Is not complete. So that opens up a new space for research, correct? Yes, that's correct. So it means that we have observed something that we, had not, we, we were not expecting, something that we had not forecasted, we were not able to describe. Uh, but that is also, it, 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 but that is just part of the story in the sense that we can use Monte Carlo also, uh, or simulations in general, also the other way around. We can use it to reproduce a new theory and then compare this to, to experimental data and then validate these new theories or uh, falsify them. So we started the discussion talking about hardware. So how the machines, uh, how does it work in practice? One of the reasons why deep learning is, um, has uh, reached such a high level of, su has reached such good results recently is really the availability of a lot of data that those models can be trained on, but also the, the um, availability of new and very powerful hardware. So I mentioned at the beginning, introducing you, that you are a quantum scientist, and that's a field that's obscure to, to most people. But in recent times, you've read a lot about it. You've read about Google achieving quantum supremacy, the European Union launching a flagship research program, program funded with billions of, of euros. So but how is quantum gonna, gonna help this quest? So um, there is indeed a lot of uh, enthusiasm around uh, quantum technologies in general and quantum computing in particular. I think the reason is that we are getting closer to the, to the moment in which uh, quantum computing will be able to solve practical problems. Um, and yes, you mentioned uh, Google's announcement on quantum supremacy as, as one of the examples, but in general, um, it's probably not something that will happen right away, but we need to get ready for it. We need to understand how to best use them and how to best integrate them in our scientific research. 